Welcome, baseball family. This week we have Blake Snell with a new home, baseball in Seoul, and predicting City Connect jerseys right now. Nine Plus Us presents the Baseball Together podcast with your hosts, Blackjack Brad and Kansas City Little Big Briggy Blue Eyes. And now, Baseball Together. Welcome, baseball family, to this week's episode of the Baseball Together podcast. I am Brad, and I'm here once again this week. Um, back off the IL, if you will. And I'm here with our guy, Brig, who was filling in for me last week. Brig, how are you doing today? Better. Better than last week. I I got a new camera and everything. <laughs> you got more than a new camera, my friend. You got a fantastic new setup. Yeah, the, Top to the bottom. production quality last week was just abysmal, I found out, <laughs> way after the show came out. <laughs> after the fact. And I was like, that is one oh, of the no. one of the downsides of the way that we do this. You can't... Like you can't, we can't see in real time what the camera looks like. We no. have to go back and look, and sometimes, sometimes you have to start over. <laughs> yep, it's true. Crazy, crazy. But so I'm good uh, now. Everything's good. Uh, You're hanging you on look all great. cylinders now. You look great, <laughs> and I love it. I'm very excited for you. So, <laughs> quick public service announcement: We are nine days away from opening day. Yes, we're going to have regular season baseball this week, but official opening day is nine days away. And that is very exciting. Yep. Oh, yeah, baby. I know I say that every week, but it is truly very exciting. It is. I am right there with you. My excite meter is 9 out of 10 right now. So, I, so break. I have my last two spring training games that I'm going to this week. Yeah. And then after that, like, I will be ready to go. I'll be ready yeah, to go okay. for, for opening day. So That's awesome. Up to this point, not so much, but but we'll get there. We'll get there. For sure, for sure, for but sure. But you know who is ready for opening day, Brig? I'm well, probably not actually, because he's just getting into camp. Is Blake Snell? Yeah, Blake Snell. Yeah, Blake I don't Snell. think is ready for opening day, but he's getting there. Oh, no. He has a new home. He signed with the Giants like yeah. thirty minutes An ago. Hour ago. Yeah, like yeah, Something not like long that. ago, the news dropped that Blake Snell is going to the Giants with a two-year, sixty-two million dollar deal with an opt-out after the twenty twenty-four season. Pretty good for the Giants. Blake oh, Snow dude. Got about what he was looking for, right? Yeah. So I, I think this it was is... a good move for the Giants. Good move for Snell. The Giants now this offseason. Are you ready for all these additions? This no, team is... this is what I was just going to say. Yeah, go ahead. This this team is ready. They're wanting to compete in the NL West. They added Matt Chapman, Jung Hoo mm-hmm. Lee, Jorge mm-hmm. Soler, Jordan Hicks, and Robbie Ray. Granted, Robbie Ray will not be joining that pitching staff until about the All Star break because right. he's recovering from Tommy John still. But when he does come back, that's a hard hard throwing lefty they're going to add to that that staff. Yeah. So they came. Does, they're coming to play this year. They are coming to play. Do you think this makes them contenders in the NL West though? At this point, uh, for With the, the wild card, star? yeah. For the wild card, it does. For the wild cards, still. Yeah. Previously, we asked the question: Are they just? Is this noise? Uh, right? Is this some sort of like future planning that they're doing? At this point, the answer is no. At this point, the, the right. future is now. So, yeah, I think it, they're they're going to go all in this this season, and hopefully, it'll give everybody a good run for their money. I like that. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to make a deal at the trade deadline too. If they're like, oh, if they yeah. are indeed still in it, if they if they try to add more guys at the trade deadline, so oh yeah, no, I like what they're doing. I mean, the, it's just hard that the fact that they have to compete with the Dodgers in their division, right? That it's like, yeah, yeah. man, this is a good team. This they would they would hunt for sure in the Central. They contend in the East, right? Yeah. But yeah. man, the NL West, like the Dodgers, are probably going to win 105 games this year. So if they don't, I'll be shocked. Me too. Yeah. The West is going to be tough all the way around, like top to bottom this mm-hmm. year. Yeah, I agree. But good no, for Snell. Good for the Giants. Uh, good for Giants fans. Yeah, yeah. Got yourself another Cy Young winner on that staff. So yeah, it's good awesome. for you. Good for you. So Shohei Otani is officially a Dodger, speaking of the Dodgers. And he's, for those of you who don't know, he's a New Balance athlete. He's a New Balance guy. Uh, he... Uh, He's not with Nike like you would expect the big names to be. He's not with Adidas like you would expect the other big names to be. It's not with Jordan. He's with New right. Balance, Jordan kind of Brown. a low key yeah. brand, right? Like synonymous with like the dad shoe, 
right? That you yeah. expect the white, the white tennis shoe with the grass stains on it, right? Yeah. Like that's the image we all have of New Balance. But for those of you who, like again, for those of you who don't know or who are not aware, New Balance has a really strong hold in baseball. Like yeah. super duper strong. For years. Yeah, they have like big, big names wear New Balance. Um, I remember when I was with the RMLs that summer, we were standing there. I was, I was holding something for picture day. I can't remember. What, I think I was holding the net for the guys to go into the batting cage because that's where they're doing, yeah. doing pictures. So I was standing there holding the net, and I was watching all these guys come in. And I was shocked, Brig, at how many of these guys came in wearing New Balance. Like guys straight yeah. out of high school, straight out of college wearing New Balance shoes. And I was like, it's not like a veteran thing. It's like a baseball player thing. Mm-hmm. I was right. I was surprised. So, yeah. Uh, as of 2023, they hold 20% of the of the league in cleats. 20% of the league is wearing New Balance. That's pretty as good. Of 2023, because mm-hmm. that's probably 20, probably 19% more than the league than the NBA, and I would probably say 20% more than the NFL as well. Yeah, you want to hear some of these names? Yeah, go for it. I know uh, Robbie Cano wears New Balance. Wore New he Balance. He does. Francisco Lindor. Obviously, Shohei Otani, Ha Sung Kim in uh, San Diego, Gene Segura. There you go. Hmm. So, Spencer Torkelson, Francisco Lind- O'Neill Cruz, Francisco Lindor, Jeremy Pena. It's awesome. It's big names wearing New Balance. I think it's cool. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a unique thing. It's kind of like Puma with soccer, right? Like they found their they found their niche and they're they're sticking with it strong. So it's cool. cool. So Brig, show us. Otani has his own logo with New Balance. Yeah. Show us that logo. I I think this is super cool. Um, there it is. The lean of Otani running the bases matches perfectly with the lean of the New Balance logo. And the thing that yeah. I like about this is, and it's just like one of those small design things, is that it shows movement. It doesn't. There's nothing about this logo that says mowing the lawn on a Saturday waiting for a lemonade. <laughs> Yeah, right. That's like right. this shows that <laughs> it shows athleticism. Yeah, I agree. And I, I agree. I and like it feels that. forward as well. It feels like carried into the future. It has a sense of progression. It has a sense of uh, like this. Uh, what am I trying to say? Established and pro- and progressive all at the same time. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. It is awesome. It's cool. Um, it's they did the same thing with Kawhi in. Leonard a couple of years ago. They like grabbed his logo from Nike or something like that. It's like a like a claw because that's his nickname because his hands are like massive. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's a whole thing with that, and they they had his logo and everything. But no, I think it's cool that they they don't have a lot of guys who are the face of their brand, but when they do, they go all in with them and they give them the treatment. And I think it's cool. Yeah. So good it's like being Otani. a Jordan athlete. The same thing, right? It's just. Yep. Well, I don't know if it's the same thing. I feel like a Jordan it's a, athlete. It's the same type of level. thing, right? It's the same, same direction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not to the same degree. It is but still yeah, an it's honor. It is. It is. And so you have on here, Brig, you have the, the notes. That the tagline is, in that run, every soul delights. Yeah. Is that what it is? So that's kind of yep. his. Is that like an Otani thing, or is that something New Balance, New Balance came up with? I, I it sounds collaborative, as far as I could find. It sounds collaborative, and plus he's running the bases, and he's running the bases in the logo. If you go and watch the ad, it's sketch art of him running the bases, almost like a flip book. It's very cool. It's very minimalist and old school. Um, and then under that tagline in it, in that run, every soul delights. They've got it written in Japanese as well and so it's they're like all the way leaning into this and it's it's awesome like you should see it it's really cool i just put it into um, google translate i translated it to japanese and then back to english okay and so the retranslation is in that run every soul rejoices Ooh, i like that better i like that better too it's good yeah good stuff so it's cool. Good for him. But while we're talking about Otani for just a minute, we learned a little while ago that he's married. He didn't say yeah. who to. He just kind of dropped on his Instagram. Hey, everybody, thanks for supporting me through free agency. And I'm a Dodger now. Oh, by the way, I'm also married. Yeah. And the joke just started coming. Man, Otani, <laughs> Otani uh, leaves the Angels and within two weeks gets a ring. Look at that. 
Yeah. But so <laughs> but he didn't say joke. who too. <laughs> we didn't know who he was married to. But we just found out when the Dodgers left to go to Seoul, Korea. It's uh, Mamiko Tanaka. She's a former Japanese basketball player. And and we read a little bit about her, about their relationship. She's retired now. Yeah. And because she never has to work a day again in her life ever again, because right. Shohei Otani yeah. makes enough money for them and everyone else. Um, yeah. But I love their story because it's like they met at a training facility, just kind of passed and then ended up meeting again a few times. And then they started dating. They didn't get to see each other much over the last year or so. And so they would watch movies together on Netflix via video chat. I love that. Yeah. That is like awesome. that, that reminds me of my college days with my wife. Right. Yeah. So it's super cool. So congratulations. It's, uh, it's very exciting. It's what we call totes adorbs. Totes. Indeed. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of totes adorbs, Bray, <laughs> let's talk spring breakout games. Did you watch any of these and why not? <laughs> no. No. I didn't. I uh, and, and why not? I didn't care enough. Is what it really comes down to. Okay, okay, that's fine. So I will tell you the reason I did not was because the one game I wanted to watch got rained out. Yeah, I was really busy, but I think if I'd have cared enough, I could have pulled it together. And I just, I don't think baseball did a good enough job of helping me care. Exactly. So this is the first step in what they're doing is the first step in getting fans to care more about their farm system. Right. Because some teams do a great job of being like, this is our, this is our current. This is our today. This is our roster. But check this out in a couple of years. This is the future of this team. The Mariners do a really, really good job of this because that's carry over from when they were bad. And they were like, they may not have much now. But hang yeah. in there in a couple of years. Mike Zunino is going to come up. He's going to be a really good big leaguer. And he was. He was a solid big leaguer, right? He was fun to watch. Fans still love yeah. Mike Zunino. Everybody congratulated him when he retired last week. Like, it was a big deal. Mariners fans are super happy for that guy in the career that he had. And it was because we followed him as a minor leaguer. Yeah. Right? And so what Major League Baseball is doing is they're trying to get more fans to care about their their team's minor league system and to care about these players when they come up. Like the Mariners, I know, like despite the talent they have at the big league level, there's some guys it's like at the minor league level, it's like, man, this guy is supposed to be better than what we have right now. Even though I like what we have now, these guys are supposed to be better. And granted, as we found out with Jared Kelnick, nothing is a sure thing. For sure. Right? Because he's right. tuning in Atlanta now as well. Yes, but, he is. So I didn't either. Like I said, the team, the game I wanted to watch, got rained out. But did you see any of like the highlights from him on like Instagram and stuff? Some of the yeah, stuff yeah, I saw highlights. Yeah. So a couple of the big things was Paul Skeens faced um, Holiday. Why can't I think of his first name right now? Jackson. Jackson Holiday. Right. Yeah, they face each other, and, Hol- and Holiday said he's like he was throwing 110. And something I've noticed in the last week and a half, like really, really noticed, Brig, is that not all 95s are created equal. And if this dude's For throwing sure. 101, because there were there were times you get guys up there like, whew, that was all of 97. Yeah, and then you get another guy up there, it's like that hit 97. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. That was a slow yeah. 97. And the fact that Skeens is up there throwing 101 and Jackson Holiday is like, he's throwing 110. Had to have been. Like, not only is it 101, it's a fast 101. And that's scary. That's yeah, really scary. <laughs> that's really <laughs> yeah. scary for anybody yeah. who's got to be in that box. Because Mitch Garber for the Mariners, they asked him one time on the radio. This was just like last week. They're like, what's your approach at the plate? He's like, um, stand in there, try not to get hit. And see if you can put the bat on the ball. <laughs> so that's all you can ask for these days. That's a great approach, honestly. <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. I love that he's completely honest about it. A good hitter, yeah. as good a hitter as Garber is. Um, the other thing that we they're saw, though, Brig. They're going to keep Skeens down, though. Oh, they ought to. They say he still needs development. Yeah. I was. Yeah, they ought to. Me and everybody he else, we're all upset about that. I, so this is the thing is I don't feel like you want to rush a guy up to the big leagues and put a big league load on his arm right away. 
I think you need yeah, to ramp sure. him up. And I think that's part of the reason guys like Steven Strasburg had such problems. Granted, yeah, he had problems sense. before, but yeah, you get him up to the big leagues, you want to slowly kind of titrate him into the into the big league workload. But the other thing yeah. we saw was the challenge system. Did you see the challenge system stuff? I did, and it was slower than it should have been. Way slower. Yeah, man, way. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> because the like, clips we geez. saw last year was like instant, was like instantaneous. Real fast. Right? Yeah. So fast. Yeah. And then for whatever reason in these breakout games, they were doing it, and it was like, you have what? Yeah. You think possibly? <laughs> Look again. That can't be a strike. Can you bring me some nachos? <laughs> I know. Well, and the players were talking about it, like, oh, it's cool because all the fans in the stands, they dropped everything they were doing. They were watching the video screen to see the ruling and everything. It shouldn't take that long because it, it doesn't but, take that long. Right, but the, they were, they're correct, right? Having that level of fan engagement is great. Mm-hmm. You don't want to slow the game down, but you don't want to put your, your new thing out there for the world to see on display and have it not work the right way when you're trying to increase pace of play that's right by shaving off two seconds off the pitch clock that's right and yeah and this is the thing like in the stadium that that length that the amount of time that it took is fine but if you're sitting at home right yes like granted granted if i'm sitting at home waiting for that i'm glued to the tv i'm waiting but if it takes more than 30 to 45 seconds to make that ruling, I might just go get another plate of nachos in the kitchen. Exactly. And you don't want that in the middle of that. No, no, no. You want to keep the eyeballs glued to the television. I think anything you can do to not get people, to keep people out. Oh, man, Brig. Anything you can do to keep people in their seats, yes. whether they're in the ballpark or at home, watching the game is the answer I agree. largely like that's a that's the starting answer right you have to fine-tune it from there but yeah yeah it, it shouldn't take that long no it shouldn't and there's no reason for it to Mm-mm. because we know it can be faster so it needs to be as fast as possible we've seen it faster it's and crazy. granted that one that we saw that one that took forever on in, on instagram that we watched like that was that grazed the corner but you could still see in the graphic pretty dang quick yeah. that it did. So, yeah. Anyway. I, boy, that <laughs> try and explain that to brand new baseball fans. Be like, okay, but you see that little teeny. Right <laughs> the lace crossed the corner of the plate. That's a strike. So that is def- that's a strike <laughs> every day, all day. Absolutely. <laughs> and somehow the catcher noticed that, but the umpire did not. Right. That's the thing that's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. How do you All decide right, to swing or lay off that one? I don't know. You don't. You, like that's why hitting is so hard. It's impossible. Yeah. I don't know how anybody yeah. does it. I don't either. All right. Let's let's go back to the Giants for just a minute. Yeah, we should. So you talked last week about uh, JD Davis getting released from the Giants. Man. Apparently, Giants players are quote irked by mm-hmm. this. Wilmer Flores, yeah. in particular said he earned his money he earned his raise he also said it needs to be addressed because it's not fair and he's absolutely right because i was thinking about this i was like think about if like you hit your year at your company or whatever whatever whenever it is that you get a raise right your annual increase and the company's like you're like well hold on i think i deserve a little bit more of a raise because i killed it this year by the way in case you missed it um exceeded all my goals right so i deserve just just a little bit well we're going to give you two and a half well then i would like four because i think i've earned it a 4% yep. raise. And then the company says, and granted, they have to agree to it because an arbitrator said, but in this case, the company agrees to it, says, yep, that's fine. But right. then behind your back, they go look for somebody to replace you. And then once they find that person, they fire you. And now they owe you a fraction of what they needed to owe you in the first place, let alone what the arbitration agent decided you deserved. Yes, your, uh, what's it called? Um, your, oh, your package. Man your severance severance package is like three weeks pay yeah yeah thanks for coming pretty much yeah that's what happened to jd davis i think it's messed up and it's totally messed up i understand it's part of the business but there's there's got to be a way that you can fix something like that like there's got to be some another part of his money that's guaranteed and granted i know he's still got 
a pretty little penny because you get over a million dollars, right? Like to yeah, us, but... most people, like that's a lot of money. But in the grand scheme of what he was supposed to get, what he was owed, yeah, it's not very much. They he robbed him. It. It's, it's robbery. They did. They did because it's straight this, up crookery. What they were going to give him was generational money. Was money that would last. That would last him and his family and his kids if he takes care yeah. of it. Whereas what yeah. they gave him is money that will take. Granted, it'll still take care of him for the rest of his life. But it's not what he could have gotten, what he was planning to, I'm sure, possibly pass on to his kids or siblings or give to his parents to help out. Because that's what a lot of guys do. A lot of guys have Mm -hmm. family on their, like, quote unquote, payroll to help them financially because they can. Yeah. And now he cannot. Nope. The big thing, though, is I hope he, I just hope he didn't go buy a new car. Because, man, yikes. Yeah. 90 day return policy, possibly. I'm but. still upset at the, you know, extended time and the tenure he's had in San Francisco. And then not only them releasing him, but doing him dirty like this. That's that's probably why these players are so irked, because it's I just so. it's just it's just wrong on so many levels. If I was a San Francisco fan, I'd be so upset. Yeah, I would be, too. So he actually so he was released on Monday and then on Saturday he signed with the A's for a, he got a one year deal, two point five million dollars. Ha! Jeez. Hmm. I think he probably could have gotten more somewhere else, but I wonder if he was just kind of like, I just I need to get somewhere, you know? And I don't want to move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe they wouldn't bought a new house now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They they did him dirty though, it, and it's messed up. I hope I hope that the next collective bargaining agreement they address this in some way. Yeah, that like either there's more guaranteed money, or there's a win- like a window where they got to keep them or something. I don't know. But there's got to be some clause or something. Yeah, exactly right. Okay, but we do have some good news. Depending on who you are, who you're a fan of, Trevor Bauer will <laughs> pitch again. That's right. <laughs> For us, this He's is great news. Very excited about this. This is, I think, this is a big deal, and it should be. Uh, yeah. Bauer is going to be part of a Mexican team, Diablos Rojos. We've heard this before because oh, they're hosting baby. the Yankees for an exhibition game. Yep. He and not very long either. That's April eleventh, yeah. and May eighth is when he'll. Oh, oh so... wait, hold on. No, no. So, he, so he's going to pitch in that game when the Yankees go down there because that's in, in like what? March. That's, that's got to be going on soon. When is that game? I don't even remember. Is it March or May? How come I can't remember? I don't know. I'm looking it up right now. Okay. Anyway, he's um, going to be part of this Mexican team, and the Yankees are coming to town for an exhibition. And then he's going to pitch five more games for them between April 11th and May 8th. And he says because – it's the best way for me to stay ready to pitch, end quote, which means by implication that Trevor Bauer assumes somebody is going to sign him between now and the deadline. And the way things are going, I think he's right. He hasn't come out and said that, but that's what this statement implies in my mind, and I think they should. I think somebody should pick so- him up. Yeah, I think so. No, he did. He specifically said it's the best way to stay ready to pitch. I, I, I thought he's absolutely right because he has yeah. his warehouse, you know, where they do all their content creation stuff, and he's always throwing bullpens to dudes and stuff like that. For sure. And, but uh, there is, and I'm referencing, um, uh, I'm ter- I'm terrible with names tonight, Brig. Uh, do it. Ken Rosenthal with this. Yeah. He said there's something to be said for standing out on a field wearing spikes as part of your conditioning for a game. Yeah. And he gets it. He understands it, that this is the best way for him to be ready to walk into a clubhouse day one when a team says finally says, you can come pitch for us. And he can say, yeah, yeah I'm ready to go. Let's do this. So this yeah, game, exactly. so the, the Yankees are playing in Mexico City March 24th and 25th. I, yeah, okay, March. So it's coming up pretty quick. Um. And so he'll he's be... kind of put it on his own camp, though. Look, he went with Asian Breeze, and now he's going to be with Diablos Rojos, and he's going to see prospects with Asian Breeze, and then he's going to see 
a combination of prospects and hopefully some big leaguers with Diablos Rojos. This is the thing. He awesome. needs to face big leaguers with Diablos yeah. Rojos. And I and we yeah. said this when they first announced this game that the Yankees need to send big leaguers anyway, or else yeah. it's just a sideshow and it's nothing more and making a mockery of the whole thing. And That's so right. Trevor Bauer needs to be able to face big leaguers here. That he should start one of these games so that he can make sure that he's getting in there and and facing those guys before they pull him out of the game. Because yeah. He needs to make somebody look foolish. Is what needs to happen at this point. That's how he's going to make his his entrance, re-entrance into the league. It's it's not going to be easy, and he's going to have to actually, like you said, he's going to have to make people force people to believe that they have made a giant mistake. That's the only yep. way. Yep, exactly right. While we're talking about the Yankees, let's give a short update on Garrett Cole. Uh, he yeah. went and he saw a doctor in LA. Uh, was a little bit. I think they were a little bit worried about what this could have been because he's dealing with some irritation, a little bit of pain in his in his elbow. Uh, said that it specifically it is nerve irritation and edema, not to be confused with the band edema in his elbow. So he won't throw for three to four weeks, and then they'll reevaluate from there. Garrett Cole said, "I think we determined that we just got a little too hot, a little too quick this spring." Now, Brig, I have a problem with this, honestly. Yeah. And I I understand not everybody throws all off season, right? Sure. Sure. And some guys don't even throw until spring training and that's the problem right. they have. Yeah. Right? Like I as a high schooler, I remember our coach saying, "You need to be you need to show, show up to tryouts in shape with your yeah. arm ready to go or you will not make the team." I don't and is I don't care who you are, you're not that good anyway. I don't need you. Was his direct right. quote is what he said to us all the time. I'll find somebody else. And granted, I know Garrett Cole is that good. They need him, and they won't find somebody else. I understand that. But as the Yankees, they can still say, Garrett, we need you to come into camp with your arm ready to go in shape so we can yeah. get you ramped up in more. Like You don't have to be in game shape. You don't have to be opening day shape. They no. don't ask that. No. But be there with your arm ready to go. Start throwing a few weeks before spring training so many guys yeah. don't do this luis castillo does not do this he doesn't touch right. a baseball all he touches is a fishing reel during the offseason and i get yeah. nervous last year he wasn't even he wasn't ready he said that he wasn't ready opening day but this year dude i watched him throw a bullpen he's ready <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome he's so ready <laughs> but, but it's it's crazy though to see guys like this is their job, you know, like we work year round at our jobs and yeah. these guys, a lot of them, they don't work outside the confines of the season. Right. You know, they're going to work to some degree, you know, they're going to hit the gym or whatever, but maybe yeah, not all of them do. Depends. Yeah, that's right. Depends on who you are and how you like to play. And I, but I feel like that's why we've seen so many injuries, especially pitcher injuries this spring is because guys yeah. just, they don't come in ready to go. And once they have to ramp up, they can't. And like Garrett Cole, you're getting older. I know you don't want to hear it. Say. You're getting older. Yeah, you're not going to be able to recover from your bullpen sessions as fast as you used to by not being yeah. in shape. It's like Ken Griffey Jr. said at one point. He was making fun of Jay Bruce because he wasn't going to eat the donuts that Junior brought into the clubhouse in Cincinnati. He's like, I got to go stretch. And Junior's like, Man, he's like, I never used to stretch. He's like, Now I have to stretch before I get out of bed. Yeah. You know, and like that's part of getting older. That's the way that's it goes. Right. It's like you've got to take care of your body in a different way as you age. And some of these guys just don't do it because they've never had to. And that's I don't right. know if it's a team athletic, like a team trainer saying, hey, you're 33 this offseason. Let's yeah. do things a little differently, you right. know, yeah. or a personal trainer saying that, whatever. But somebody's got to tell these guys, like, you're not 25 anymore. You're not going to bounce back. Not at this level of strain. Yeah. And that, that's that been bugging me. That's been driving me crazy, in case you didn't notice, all spring. Well, I just love that soapbox of yours. So you just get on it whenever you want. <laughs> I shall. I sure will. One last thing about the Yankees uh, being game day ready, especially in, in light of the Diablos Rojo situation. What better uh, guy to face, if you want to be facing big leaguers for Trevor Bauer, than Aaron Judge. And Aaron Judge is still dealing with abdominal discomfort. And he says he should be or hopes to be game day ready on opening day. But I'll bet you they don't send him to Mexico. 
Not if he's dealing with abdominal discomfort. No way. Yeah, they're not because no, that can linger, and you don't want that. So yeah, DJ LeMay who also has bone bruise, and he will be out for an undetermined amount of time. Maybe that's their ploy. All these guys are all injured. We can't send them to Mexico. Yep, yeah, I can see that. That sucks. But on the other hand, though, Brig, they just had uh, the Mets former GM just got suspended for a year because he was manipulating the IL. So I don't know. (laughs) It's a true story. I don't know. Let's Let's talk about Mike Trout for just a minute. Okay. Mike Trout says he wants the Angels to add more players. He says, (laughs) I'm in their ear every day. I don't know what's going on with the market right now. It's pretty crazy. (laughs) That part right there was so funny to me. Like. He he says he doesn't know what's going on with the market, but he wants them to add guys. So who do you want him to add, Mike Trout? Who do you want him to add? Yeah. Apparently, he wants right. them to add Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham. Mike Trout, the GM, wants Tommy Pham <laughs> signed by the Angels. <laughs> okay, that's what we call Delulu. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I love it. I love that he wants to be involved. And he said at the end of last season, hey, I'm going to be way more involved. I'm going to be asking for things. I'm going to be you know, stepping up and saying something, giving us all the impression that he wanted us a, a more, you know, to be heard more and have a larger voice and say in the conversations about what happens at the front office level. But if this is his showing, then it's not it's not going to work. Like, not just advocating for Tommy Pham, but also admitting that you don't know what's going on in the market. I think, though, that we could interpret that statement a different way. Instead of saying, I don't know what's going on in the mar- with the market as being a, a sort of, like, unaware or aloof mentality, I think you oh. could flip that on its head and him saying, like, I don't know what's going on, right? Almost incredulous rather than uninformed. That's what I. That's how this reads to me. Yeah, it could be because he follows it up with it's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And the, the thing that's crazy to me though about that is that he said that in specifically in this interview he mentioned Tommy Pham. He did right. not mention JD Martinez. I don't know. It's weird. It's odd. And so I don't know. It's going to be a whole Who knows, thing, man. <laughs> it's fascinating. So. But I want to end it with this. One thing that I thought was funny, though, was that he said that the Angels have a lot of confidence, but he'd oh, like yeah. them to make additions. <laughs> but don't worry. So. I came out of that meeting. And you know what those guys said? They got a lot of confidence. So I got, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I think everything's going to be okay. I told them we should go get Tommy Pham. They said, okay, thanks, Mike. I said, okay, thanks, guys. And they went and they shut the door and they said, we, don't worry, we have a lot of confidence. He said, okay, thanks. <laughs> Glad they have confidence. Very good. All right, let's end with this before we go take a break. Okay. We talked about baseball and soul this week, so let's talk a little bit about it. Brig, why don't you run down this and give us a, uh, I don't know, like I'll give you tell the us deets. what's going on so in Seoul. Yeah, give us the deets between the Dodgers and the Padres. They've been there for a couple of days playing some yep. exhibition games. The, the Padres are barely beating KBO teams, by the way. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because they're fielding an entire team of either converted or pure shortstops, Brad. So everybody yeah, on social media is super excited about almost the entire Padres lineup being shortstops and how this is somehow a really good thing, and they're reframing the way baseball should be composed or teams should be composed from here on out. And I call hooey. It's not going to work. It's already not working in Seoul. Stop it. Stop it right now. Okay? It's clickbait. It's dumb. Listen, the Dodgers and the Padres are going to play the opening series in Seoul, South Korea. If you've never been to Seoul, you should go. It's an amazing place. Okay. Now, because it makes so it much sense, <laughs> yeah, because it makes so much sense, Los Angeles and San Diego markets will be subject to blackout restrictions. So keep that in mind. But the rest of us who may or may not be fans of either of these teams, because or just want to watch regular their, season baseball. Yeah. Why would we let their fans watch the games? We don't. You don't get to. But the rest of us, we can. Okay. 
is going to be on ESPN. <laughs> Coverage is going to begin at 5.30 p or a.m. Excuse me, 5.30 a.m. Eastern. That's going to be Wednesday, March 20th, and Thursday, March 21st. ESPN Deportes is going to host the Spanish broadcast. They, they, they are going to begin at 6 a.m. Eastern. Otani is going to make his Dodger debut this series, which is exciting, though. Just remember, he's not going to pitch at all for the whole year. Hitting, hitting is enough for Otani, though, let's be honest. But he's going to hit the crap out of the ball, and he's going to do it against a bad Padres team in Seoul. It's going to be very exciting. Then, uh, so the pitching matchups, I think, are really cool. We have Tyler Glasnow versus Yu Darvish on Wednesday. And Thursday is Yashinobu Yamamoto versus Joe Musgrove. And it's going to be the bomb. Those pitching matchups sound really cool. They do sound really cool. And the thing that's funny is, like you said, against a bad Padres team, is that like those those pitching matchups, those are headliners, right? Yeah. But then yeah. it is kind of like the rest of that Padres team, it's kind of like, well, I don't know really what we're getting. They've got Tatis, right? And Machado is still the Machado. Yeah, he's still an MVP candidate through July every year. For sure. Right? Yeah, for sure. And I, and honestly, maybe the only reason he falls off is because his team does. Right? Sure. And then yeah. they're kind of like, well, you're, they're not playing well enough for him to be an MVP candidate anymore. So, but maybe. No, I don't know. But it's funny. That whole shortstop thing, that was really good. I like that because positionless basketball works, <laughs> positionless baseball, not so much. It's not working. Because, <laughs> We're going to see it all year. It's not going to so, work. <laughs> so speaking of just the the Dodgers are reverse engineering. You talked a little bit about this last week with, with Mookie Betts. Yeah. They're re, reverse engineering that thing. They've got a guy who is a freak athlete, and they're like, you can play shortstop. Yeah. Well, I know it was the first his first game at shortstop, Brig. But what I saw out of Mookie Betts at shortstop didn't look great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I wondered about. I that. was, I was watching. I was kind of like, mm, "There's got to be better options somewhere." Like, granted, again, like I said, freak athlete Mookie Betts. He can get to the ball, but playing on that totally. side feels a little different. Yeah, and I, I don't know that I would, I, I would, I would look somewhere else if I could. Is it better Maybe than Gavin Lux? Run. Well, the problem with Gavin Lux, he can't throw the ball, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. And so he can get to the ball. But if you're well, saying Mookie Betts can get to the ball, he can't turn a double play from that side of the infield, though. That I did notice that right away. That didn't take long to see that one. So this yeah. is the this is the thing is like it's like I was saying that maybe he's their best option that they have in house. Yeah, but there's got to be somebody they can go get who is a defensive first second or shortstop, and then just make up for that deficiency offensively somewhere else in the lineup. Maybe yeah. Kike Hernandez is the answer. Because he might be maybe a better he, shortstop. <laughs> maybe Kike. Hernandez. But then they want to wow. have Gavin Lux in the lineup somewhere because they like his bats. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Rig. It's a whole weird it's thing chaos. In, in LA. It's, I'll it, bet you Mookie Betts rises to the occasion and it smooths it out. That's what I'll bet happens. This is this is the thing, though. Is Rick, He's not going to be an all-star shortstop. I want to see no. Mookie Betts in the all-star game, but I don't want to see him there because he's an elder statesman just because he's yeah. there. I want to see yes. him there because he earned it. I want to see him there playing second base, right field, not shortstop, at least the way that he's going now and the trajectory that he's going to be on by the All-Star game. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It makes a lot of sense to me. So, But I will say I will be watching these games on tape delay because I'm not going to be getting that up that early on my nope. day off for anything. Same. Yeah, no. So, But, yeah, I'll be watching them later. That'll be fun. It'll be fun to watch those games for sure. I like it. Yeah, I agree. I hope they do like pageantry and spectacle and stuff. That's my favorite. When they yeah, go to these visiting will. series and stuff, they do it all. And I like it yeah. up. I'm sure they will. All right, baseball family, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to talk about this year's City Connects jerseys and make some of our predictions for what we think we might see. All right, baseball family, welcome back. We are going to talk about the City Connect uniforms that we expect to see this season. There are a lot of them. But before we do, let me remind you that one of the things that we love to ask our guests when they come on the show is about their favorite sunflower seed flavor. 
we all have some favorites around here. I love Parmesan and pepper. It's the number one best sunflower seed flavor of all the flavors in the whole situation of sunflower seeds. Brad loves him some hatch chili and these days butter. it's smokehouse barbecue. I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah. That one's awesome. Smoky yeah. and sweet all at the same time. So mm -hmm. Okay. So listen, if you didn't notice the packaging Brad was holding up there from Chinook Cedary, we love Chinook Cedary seeds so much that we reached out to them. We asked them if we could partner with them. They said, they said, yes, it was awesome. So now we can give you guys a discount, and it's 10% off. You can use code BTPOD at checkout, and you can get 10% off your order. That also supports us here at the show. Again, that's ChinookCedary.com, BTPOD, for 10% off your order. The, the flavors are original, jalapeno ranch, smokehouse barbecue, lemon pepper, cinnamon toast, and dill pickle. So go to ChinookCedary.com, use code BTPOD for 10% off your order. All right. Baseball Hold family. on, Schnooks, real quick. Jalapeno yeah. Ranch, sneaky good. Oh, yeah, so good. Sneaky good. I totally agree. Yeah. That's like my that's like my dark horse. When I'm looking around and I'm like, I'm out of Hatch Chili, I'm out of Parm and Pep, I definitely reach for that Jalapeno Ranch. And that's saying a lot because Brad does not like ranch-flavored anything, ever. No. So for him to endorse a ranch-flavored Anything, anything that, that says it's ranch for yeah. him to endorse it, you know it's good, baseball family. <laughs> I'm telling you. True facts. True facts. All right. All right. All right. So we got the City Connect uniforms have been, uh, you know, all the rage, I guess, for the last couple of seasons. And with mixed you reviews. You love them or you hate them. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. just like you said, mixed yeah. reviews is what I said. You yeah, said mixed reviews, right? You either love them or you hate them. Um, we still have mixed opinions on all of them, all of them. And sometimes I go back and forth on which ones are my favorite. But one thing we love to do that we started last season was going through and saying, you know what? This season, City Connect uniforms are going to look like this. And that's what we're going to do today. So we have the list of the cities that are going, of the teams rather, that are going to get City Connect uniforms this season. And we're going to tell you what we think they could and or ought to look like. Woo, Brad, let's run down are you the ready? List real quick. Let's run down the list real quick and let them know hey. what we're going to see. So we're, we're going to see the Phillies, Cleveland's yeah. baseball club, the Tigers, yeah. Dodgers, getting another one, the Twins, yeah. Mets, Cardinals, Rays, and Blue Jays will all be getting City Connect jerseys or uniforms this year. And so, like Brick said, we're going to go through. We're going to start with the Phillies, though, because this is interesting. Yeah. This was like, what, like a month or so ago we saw this? Yeah, it was like a month ago. There was a leak. Yeah. And we saw this. And I got to tell you, Brig, I hope, truly hope, that this is not the case. Yeah. I'm not a fan. I'm not impressed. No. I it's think, like... though, this will look better on the field than it does right here. Stand alone. Yeah. I think it will. Um but I'm still, I'm not a fan. I do like the details. It's clearly they put a lot into it of thought, right. rather. The 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 script they've used, font, typeface, whatever you want to call it. Tell me it, about that. Tell me about that, because I don't like it. What is the what is the script? It, to me, use? it looks like the the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Like the script is like a a feathered quill pen that they would have used to pen important documents. Okay, I was wondering. Here. So initially, I was like, "That's awful." But then, just now, as we're sitting here looking at this, that was my initial thought: was that it was kind of it was supposed to be a quill pen kind of thing, yeah. Uh, as yeah. far as the font goes, but I don't, I don't like the way that it looks on the front of the jersey very much. No, as much as I love the history aspect of that, uh, I don't, I don't like the way that it looks there. Still not the gradients not on the great. sleeve don't do it for me. Um. I don't, and I don't like the yellow. I'm sorry. But the patch on the side is great. The love with the bell, that's awesome. Right. Yes, that's really good. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I have a hunch, Brick, because we don't see a hat here. We haven't seen a hat yet, I don't believe. Right. I have a hunch that the hat will probably be navy blue with a Liberty Bell on the front. Yeah, and yellow accents. Yeah. If not a yellow bell. I can see a yellow bell. 
Could see a yellow bell. Or a yellow visor with a white bell. I don't know. That'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Anyway, uh, so we decided we would start. With, let's just start with Philly, Brad. We're going to go through and make our predictions on what we think they look like or what we hope to see. And, Brad, I'm going to invite you to go first. Okay. So I want the Phillies to stick with the red. I like the red. And probably just go, go. let's say, let's just go red, white, and blue. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. Philadelphia is the birthplace of the nation. Let's stick with red, white, and blue. Stick yeah. with the Liberty Bell. That's something that has been, that's an iconic piece of that city. And mm -hmm. quite frankly, I think a great part of what they have going on with their secondary tertiary logos and everything like that. So I mm -hmm. like the idea of the Liberty Bell on the hat, but I want a little bit more to go with it. Like maybe like a Philly behind it. Like, like a, a cheesesteak? Like no, 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 like the word Philly behind it. <laughs> Let's put a cheese stick on the patch, though, on the side. Let's go ahead and do that. That's just, yeah, I agree I'm with okay that. Enough. Okay. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and maybe, there, here we go, Brig. I hadn't thought about this until just now. But let's do Cheese Whiz on, instead of like a gradient. Let's have Cheese Whiz going up the sleeves. Just there you go. It. Like a swirly. Some like, kind just of... Almost like, like a drip, you know, kind of like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, let's do that instead of a gradient. Okay. I think it would look a there lot better. Uh, and there's your yellow right there, right? There's the yellow. yellow. There it is. Yeah. But these jerseys are going to be red primary okay. as their primary color. And I like the fact that, that, that the jersey said Philly across the front. Leave that. Um, yep. I think that if you're going to go with a quill pen style, though, just go script. I know it's not going to be easy, but they're, they're screen so. printing these jerseys anyway. So you can screen print a script like. Yep. John Hancock's. Yeah, that's right. Like a swirly type Sam type Adams right. thing. Yes, exactly. You you can screen yeah. print that on there and have it say Philly. Sure. I think that would look fantastic. And then put put the bell on the left breast under the part under the L and the Y. I think that would look really cool. Yeah. But you know what? You have to just go with white pants. Just go white pants. Hmm. You lost that's me at white pants, but I feel you. Yeah, I want white pants. Yeah, the Mariners are going white pants with with City Connect this year, and I'm very excited. It's the right answer. That's the right answer. Yeah, that's a no brainer. Yeah. Yep. Although the black went, did look better than I thought they would. But. It did. It looks a lot. It and you know, guilty. I wear black shorts with my blacks with my blue City Connect jersey. You would. Yeah, you're right. Although I do feel like it makes it look like I'm like trying to get in. You know. Like, yeah. <laughs> I would never wear it with my glove because then I would definitely look like I was trying to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. Put me in, coach. Put me in, Scott. I'm ready. But yeah. anyway. <laughs> okay, so what do you want to see? What are you expecting or want to see from the Phillies this year? So we have a lot in common. First, let me get this joke out of the way. I'm a huge Rocky fan, so I saw this when I was doing my research. And I was like, yes. <laughs> do you can they They're, do you think they can do that? Can they include like some Rocky something somewhere? Do you think? Well, the statue is in Philly from the film. It's just not right. at the top of yeah. the steps, right? It's down around the corner. And it's the Philadelphia Museum of Art that he runs up. That's right. That's right. So I was thinking I've never seen the movie okay. and I know that, Brig. You what? I've never even seen the movie and I know that. Well, I know what we're doing when you come. Yeah, there you go. Okay, stop everything. Um, I had Marina sit down and watch them with me. We've been yeah. making our way. We just finished the fourth one. Yeah. Nice. I love that franchise. Anyway, okay. Sorry, get back on track. I'm with you on the red, but I want the red to be muted. I'm talking like really dark, muted, faded, almost splotchy, like like gunpowder smoke across a deep crimson. Kind of a... okay. Almost like a hazy crimson of some kind. That's what I want to see. And then I want the script Philly, just like you said, with the big swoopy mm -hmm. revolutionary script hand script, right? And I want it thin in some parts and broad in others, just like if it had been done with a maybe mid, like an like ink a, splot. An ink splot would be awesome. Like awesome. And then what I want to see is I want parchment, like yellowed parchment pants. That yellow. Like cream, parchment, cut, like like the cream. No, but I want it more. Well, you you, you could do more. cream to get away with it. I think. 
Yeah, 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 to make it easier. But I think if we're going to get – so what we saw in uh, Arizona with the Serpentes, how they went and they they did whatever oh, they wanted right. to, right? Yeah, you're and right. And then how we saw with um, Washington, how we had that fe- the heather texture in their, in like their jerseys, the gray yeah. heather that looked like wool. Like, give me something like that. Like, I want it to look like wool on top. I want it to look like – wool or a twill or something on the bottom and i want it in that that same cream color that we all sort of associate with the declaration of independence over a really deep blood red uniform jersey script say philly on the front in with a capital p and then it moves to a lowercase y keep it all in cursive and then i want to see the the patch love i loved that love thing Mm -hmm. with the belt and I think if you do that and you give me some stripes on the socks that are blue, you get the, all the red, white, and blue in there, you're good to go. You make uh, the visor blue that ties in with the socks. The cap is red on its own. You could do a cream-colored cap for all I care. It doesn't matter to me. But I think you could throw blue in I'll there on the cap and on the socks. Cap. I'll tell you why they can't do a cream-colored cap. What? Too close to the color of the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, so, I just mean a cream visor. Won't they let you get away with a cream visor? I don't think that they can. Yeah, you. Yeah, you know, I know they have like the the front paneling with the white, but you don't see that in games often. It's true. Not anymore. Not yeah. anymore. Yeah. Okay, so make it the same uh, crimson cap with the blue visor that the matches visor. the navy blue socks. Yeah, I got really excited about the color of those socks. I could see like a like that cream color, like that faded cream color sock with the blue. Like a dark blue candy stripe. Yep. That that gets me really excited, Brick. I'm gonna be honest me with you. Too. I Thank like you. the that would be awesome. That's that would look super sharp. Yeah. Do you go pennies? Do you go pennies on the pants? Or are they solid? Uh no, they're solid. Solid. Okay. Right. Although now that you say that, it'd be kind of cool. Go red pins huh. on the pants. Yeah, if you if you brought the the same crimson color down over the cr- the cream colored pants, yeah, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that'd be cool. Too. That'd be old timey too, and that'd be awesome. Yeah, for sure. The whole thing I want it to be way not just retro, but like old timey. Old timey, right? yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Okay, take us to Cleveland, Brig. Okay, Cleveland. This is the easiest one. Cleveland's baseball club already did their City Connect when they did their rebrand. What do you think, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> rock and roll rock and roll i totally agree with you i actually have a far more developed opinion i just wanted to be a okay then share it go ahead go ahead okay so because well, keep... actually because full disclosure i had the same thought though i was like it's guardians like it's there didn't you yeah i did because yeah. they they pulled from the city the monument with the bridge and whatever yeah no 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 okay i was just okay, go ahead butthead. okay so i want them to stick with the red white and blue Okay. And I want uh, white in the body of the uniform. And I want one sleeve to be red and one sleeve to be blue. Or I would accept a big thick stripe coming down the side that's red or blue on one side and the opposite on the other. Comes all the way down the inside oblique area of the uniform where the seams meet and then continues all the way down through the pants, right? If they went with a stirruped sock, I'd be happy. Don't not actually a stirrup, just print the sock to look like stirrups. I, that's that would be awesome. And then what I want to see are this all matches the city flag, by the way. Okay. Okay. The red and the blue opposite one another match the, the city flag. Okay. Then what I want to see, I want them to lean all the way into the rock and roll thing. I want the front to see to say C L E. For Cleveland, okay. right? Or I would accept land with a the somewhere above it. Mm, the land, the yeah. land would be totally okay across the chest, and and it's got to be all white. And then I want those red and blue accents floating around. And then you can go ahead and put the statue guardian on the sleeve or the jock tag or whatever you want to do. That's fine. Here's the thing, though, um, the. I feel like a lot of people are going to say, well, why not go with Forest City? Because I think Forest City is one of their big nicknames and whatever. Here's the problem. 
The reason Nike can't or shouldn't, and I hope won't, go with Forest City is because they already butchered the green option with Colorado. And we learned that it did. It just didn't go as well as we all hoped. It it's looked not like horrible. an adult softball league jersey. Right. And, and if you take out the green pants, it does improve dramatically. However, I think they are going to, they're going to, if that was their plan, they've backtracked and have to, had to come up with something else because it just doesn't go. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. What do you think? Okay. Lean all the way into rock and roll. Lean yeah. all the way into the rock and roll hall of fame. I want vest jerseys. Ooh. That look like, Leather vests. Give me yes. Ricky Vaughn style leather vests. That's what yes. I want. <laughs> and you know what goes well with that, Brig? Black pants and mohawks. Yes. <laughs> and everybody's got a mohawk. No, but no, like <laughs> lean all the way into the rock yeah. and roll thing. Go hardcore yeah. with it. Vest, black vest jerseys that say CLE, the land, something like, like you said, and make sure. it like the Hard Rock Cafe font. Right, yep. something like that, or more like Def Leppard font. Yeah, something like that's that. what it's I was. Got it's got to be rock and roll. It's got to be rock. Yeah. And you, I don't know that they can, but I would love to see them incorporate the major league mohawked baseball in there somewhere. Hundred um, percent. And you know what with you could sunglasses. do with, with the sunglasses. You could make that face a little bit like that guardian. Like one of the guardians. Oh yeah, for sure. You could you could alter that a little bit and make it like a mohawked guardian baseball with sunglasses on all of it. Just lean all the way into rock and roll, major league, because that's the reason that team has been as popular as it has been for the last forty years. Is because unless you're a local, yeah. Unless yeah, unless you're yeah, unless you're local, and so Mm -hmm. you've got to lean into that and go full rock and roll and make the numbers like like I said. Go with I like go with the Def Leppard font, and then have yeah. like a have a guitar on the back, yeah, like it's draped across the back at an angle, like a <laughs> you know, it's not a real angle, but have a guitar yeah. so they got it hung over their back from shoulder to hip. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, dude, because that would be hardcore. That I would, would be buy hardcore. one of those. Greg. I'd buy a jersey yeah. if that's what it looked like. That you're basically you described uh, the party animals. The party animals, yeah, animals. I know. Right, that's yeah. basically that's awesome. Yep, yeah, a lot like <laughs> it. Except there's a, they have the black one, but they also have the pink. They have, so I got an up close look at the pink paint splatter jerseys that they have. Yeah, they're sick. I they're that sweet. Was super cool. Yeah, <laughs> I liked it a lot. That's awesome. That's really cool. All right, okay. let's go into Detroit. Okay. So Detroit, I feel like this is another team that's been around forever, right? Yeah, yeah. For hundreds, hundreds of thousands of years since the dawn of time. For sure. And they need to lean all the way into the old England D that they have that they have had, or old English D that they've had for a really long time, but make it bigger and bolder on mm. on the hat. Okay, go okay. dark navy hat like they have. But we need a we need the old tiger logo and see this is this is where I'm having a little bit of trouble with this one because I can't get away from like the tiger thing. I need to go more Motor City, yeah, right. And so maybe yeah. you just go Old English D and then have Motor City across the across the chest, right? And right. then have this. This is another one of those like old faded white cream colored uniforms, like what the Twins have as their one of their alternates. Same yeah. color because you're throwing it back. Yeah have motor city on there and then like have like a tire for the O's or something like that. I think that because this is a throwback old school throwback Jersey, it can't be super elaborate. Like I went really elaborate with, with the Cleveland one, right with the guardians, but this, yeah, one, needs to sure. be, this one needs to be simple and just have like some blue and some blue accents. Like on the, you're, I'm almost, honestly, I'm almost going with the twins alternate. But make it motor that's city. That's so sweet, though. Yeah. So super basic. Um, don't don't go any accents on the on the old English D on the hat, and then give mm-hmm. them. I'm in love, Brig, with the idea that you said that those washed out 
white white socks with the blue candy stripes that's yep. the answer for the tigers as well yeah i could see that that's awesome so that's what i'm going with on this okay go with me down the story time with okay. the detroit tigers okay so there is a strong you got to you got to make a nod to motor city right right but motor city is motor city for automobiles but it's also motown for African American music, right? When Motown right. was the thing. Yep. And that's where Motown came from, was Motor City, right? Detroit. So I say, uh -huh. why don't we find a way to blend Motor City and Negro Leagues? And I want them to put Hitsville, USA across the front because then you get the dual Hitsville with baseball plus Motown and you can play off on each other. Then I want them to borrow something from the city flag, which is elaborate and it, it's beautiful. You should see it. It's got the 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 upper hoist corner the, against the flag is stars, 13 stars. And then the lower fly, which is the lower portion, not against the pole, has the stripes, red and white stripes for the American flag. And then you've got um, the fleur-de-lis because it's, it originally was a French fort and a French settlement. Brad, you're the man. And then you've got the Lions, okay, up in the upper fly. You can't use the Lions because they're already the Tigers. So cut that out. The red, white, and blue, done to death. We're, we don't need more of that. So now you're left with the fleur de lis okay? So I say what you're going to do is you incorporate the fleur de lis and uh, so you combine it with the automotive and music motifs. I don't know how you're going to do it. But I think what needs to happen is a fleur de lis on the breast. Okay. Uh, around the, um, so it says Hitsville, USA. And then the fleur de lis goes around the, not the breast, the lower abdomen where the, the numbers need well, the, to be. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you, you could drop you put the that behind the, the could you put that behind the number? That's what I'm saying. You, you wrap the, you wrap it around the numbers in some kind of way. Just one really elegant fleur de lis. But okay, I still want all of this to be a Negro Leagues nod. So simplify all of it, like you said, and go all the way down to mo the most minimalist design. And I want a basically, I want a white uniform and I want a retro blocky uh, Negro Leagues words that say either Motown or Hitsville or something like that. Uh -huh. And then I want all the piping to be big and fat around the the cuffs and the collar and oh. all of that stuff. Uh, and then white pants with the big thick blocky stripe down the side. And uh, that's what, so it, you're going to take an old Negro league style uniform and you're going to put a fleur de lis in there somewhere and you're going to call it Hitsville. Can you put the fleur de lis on the hat or what are you doing with the hat? That's a great, that's a great choice. Actually move it off the uniform and onto the hat. That's a great idea. I like it. I the only issue I have is that I usually associate that with um, New, Orleans. New Orleans. I know it's on the flag, I know. but yeah, that that's the only, only that's the only thing you're going to struggle with. I had the same thought, but what you well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you'd fix it. I I, I still like the fleur de lis, but I wonder how much resonance that has still in the city, because um, I went all the way back. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. I like it though. Book. I think it's a. I think it's a cool, cool design. I think you lean into the Motown thing, honestly, though, and you yeah. you pull that Negro League influence big time. That's what I would. That do. Would That's the really first cool. place I would yep. start. Yep. Okay. Um, let's do the Dodgers. Do, do the Dodgers. Have, what, do have, what do you have for the Dodgers? Because uh, <laughs> what they have isn't great. I don't. It sucks. I guess I don't know that the fans will be very keen because they've already got one. You see. But it's not very nice. So it is not very nice. <laughs> it's so still super we're, lazy. It is lazy in their pajamas and it's dumb. So we're already getting one, or we already have one, and they're getting another one. It makes no sense. And LA is known for a bazillion different things, right? Yeah. 
I think that if they don't lean into the Hollywood sign somehow, they've made another mistake. That's what I was going to say. Just go dodge. The only, just the only change they need to make is go Dodgers across the jet, the chest like the Hollywood sign. Just do that. I disagree. That's I disagree. They okay. need to lean into it, though. I totally agree. However, okay. we're going to shake up the entire design scheme. Okay. okay. What I want to see is the uniform split into thirds once more. And I want this sleeve, kind of like San Diego City Connect. I want this sleeve one color. I want the other sleeve the other color. And I want piping or stripes running down either pant leg. And I want them in a serrated, jagged look. Because here's the flag of Los Angeles. Mm. And I want a, a green on one side. And I want the red on the other. And I want the uniform to be yellow. That's what I want. And you do it with white pants and you put the uh, red stripe down one side and the green stripe down the other. And the reason this flag is really cool. OK, the red is for wine. The the orange in the middle is for oranges. And the green is for olives and olive trees, which are the hmm. three big agricultural industrial uh, or agricultural efforts in Los Angeles. I think that's freaking sweet. So you lean into that. Plus. It's got a nod to all the Hispanic cultures, all the Latinx cultures that are going on there. It was initially it was a Spanish settlement and then New Spain and then Mexico and then the United States and all this stuff. So it goes all the way back and you've got those beautiful Hispanic colors. So use them, right? Grab mm -hmm. up that that demographic that, and give them some more love there. I think the sales would be out of this world if you built it and you started with the the flag as your color scheme. That'd be pretty cool. So I do think that they need to change the, the font on the chest and make it like the yeah. Hollywood sign. I think that would be really cool if it's a Dodgers. Yeah. Um, but they, and they need to go simple with the hat because the Los Dodgers hat, it feels mm -hmm. like something you would buy like at, at the team store for like a little kid. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look yeah. like a big league hat. So go with, because there's something to be said, in my opinion, for Dodger blue. Because if you see blue in that Iconic. city, you think two things, and one of them is Dodgers, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, so stick with the blue on the Dodgers. And then instead of having a blue hat, go with a black hat with the mm. traditional LA logo, logo, because black and blue looks great together. White pants. And I think that would be super duper sharp, super simple. Mm. Don't because they went simple before, but they went the wrong way with it. They just went lazy yeah. with it. But I think if they simplified yeah. it with a black hat with a with the Dodger blue jersey and then white pants, I think it would all go well, really well together. Hmm. Cool. So I hate yeah. black and blue together, so it's hard for me to just, to agree with you. I know that. you do. I so I don't I don't like navy blue and black together, but I like like Dodger blue, Lord. Royal blue, like the, yeah. the Mariners city connect with the blue and the black, yeah. I think looks. Yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love You're that. right. That, that Royal blue does look better. I just have an aversion to black and blue usually. And think about how many black LA hats you're going to sell. They already do. I was going to say anybody who doesn't have one now would get one. My only issue with that is that they already do sell a million black LA hats. Why not produce something else? Because we know it's a money grab. So produce something that's else that's new and unique. Well, if instead that, of it being black with a white logo, it's black with a blue logo. That people yeah. don't have. Yeah, that would be good. That'd be good. I could. I'd like that better. There we go. Okay, it, it might be hard right. to see, but I think it would still look really good. So. Yeah. Okay. Do you the want twins. me to jump into Minnesota, or do you want to jump into Minnesota? Go ahead. Go ahead with Minnesota. <clears throat> okay so this was hard because yes. i don't know a ton about minneapolis to be honest with you okay but it, because it was difficult i got to do some digging and i learned some pretty cool stuff okay what the for me the very first thing i think of when i think of minneapolis is prince oh I was gonna say so cold. i was like what i was gonna say cold oh well, yeah yeah well there's cold <laughs> <laughs> but I think of Prince, and so I, I looked it up. And people, if you're from the Twin City area, if you're from Minneapolis uh, or St. Paul, 
apparently you correct me if I'm wrong, but apparently y'all say it rains purple, which I think is awesome because of Prince's song "Purple Rain," right? Okay. So I'm like, okay, how are we gonna how are we gonna make this whole thing a nod to Prince? So it's you're gonna you're gonna use purple, you're gonna use purple in the uniform, and it's not gonna be Colorado's deep like really dark purple. You're gonna turn up the brightness. You're gonna make it more vivid, and you're gonna have some more pink and and highlight in there. Okay, it's gonna be the Prince purple. Now, what you're also gonna do is you're gonna take the. It, don't go black because now we're talking about Colorado again. Stay navy blue. We're gonna go purple, and you're gonna go navy blue, and that purple is gonna be on the bright violet side. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this iconic grain belt beer sign and you're going to put it over the left breast and you're going to put instead of grain belt you're going to put mill city or the mini apple or and my personal preference is prince town you're going to take that and you're going to put prince town on top of it that's going to go on the front breast of your jersey it's going to be a purple jersey brad and it's going to be on white pants and it's going to have purple socks and it's going to have a purple cap and it's going to be absolutely fabulous. And if you really want to get fancy, you put Prince's logo on your visor, but they'll never do that because that'll cost too much money. <laughs> yeah, that would be the that symbol. Yeah. 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 I like that. a lot. You hate it and that's OK. <laughs> I don't hate it. No, I like it. Oh, because really? I think because it, it also feels like it's a nod to the Vikings, too. With the purple, true, yeah, it's a big deal in that town. So it is. I I want to. My thing is like I really want to include St. Paul in there somewhere, right? Yeah, and also because the St. Paul Saints are a big deal, for um, sure. And you've got the Mississippi River running through there as well, and you've got Minnesota is also the land of a thousand lakes, and, Minis sure. and Minneapolis is a city of lakes. So I would instead of going purple, I would actually go with like an azure blue, not navy, but like a little bit brighter blue. Yeah. To go more towards the lakes. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then if you go toward in fact, it would be it actually be more the color of the city flag, which is a blue pennant. Yeah, it is. With um with things pointing different things, you don't need to include that. But you want that blue color, I think, and I think you, I think you kind of go with the flags, right? Like this year, that with their their spring training hat, their batting practice hat, and even their clubhouse hat, all leaned really heavily into the the cross St. Paul and Minneapolis flags, and I think you kind of yeah. lean into that so that you can include St. Paul because you don't have the twins unless it's the Twin Cities, right? So I think you True. include that, and maybe you have some kind of, like maybe steal the St. Paul Saints um, font. And use mm -hmm. that on on the uniform instead of the current font that they have, which is a little bit more old school, right? Kind of got the barbs on it and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you take that and use that instead. And then, but it's it's all on, I can't decide if I want a white uniform with with the blue or that blue color with the with like white, right? And since you yeah. go with color for the, for the uh, city connects anyway maybe it's all just blue sure yeah that's you know, kind of the theme yeah. it all just it all just goes blue and and then you use that same logo that they've been using on the hat i know it's lazy but sometimes these things are a little lazy and you just put yeah, those flags are. on the yeah. hat and then you're <laughs> nodding to both cities so i don't know well and it's new anyway the, the cross flags are new i don't think yeah i don't know if it's new or if it's a throwback much. right is it a throwback I don't know. That's a great question. They're newish. They feel new. They're new. They're new to 2024. They're new. They're, they're new, new to feeling. Brad. New to this decade. Yeah, you're right. It is. New they feeling. appear new. So. <laughs> but yeah, this was the one that I really struggled with. I had a hard time with a lot. Yeah, I did too. Because first. I really I did. did. Yeah, I've been to many. I've been to Minneapolis. I enjoyed the city yeah. a lot, but I don't know a lot yeah. about it. Same. So. Okay. Okay. The Mets. Tell us about the Mets, Brad. Why don't you start us off? Or do you or I can, whatever you want. No, 
fine. This one, this one was tough too because yeah. this is the thing is that I really like a lot of what the Mets do. Right, like I don't love the orange, so maybe you nix the orange and you just go with black and blue. Now you're back to black and blue, Brad. I know because I love black and blue, and this is the thing, Brig, is there is a ton, <laughs> there is a ton of red and navy blue. So why can't there be more black and blue in baseball? Yeah, you're right. No, I, I, you there know? is a ton. Yeah, and and so, but the thing is, is you're including a red accent because it's the Big Apple. Mm, okay. Leaning into apples here, Brig. And I got so it. what we're doing is we're putting an apple on the hat. And then not just okay. any apple, but it's gonna be it's gonna be poking out of the, the home run thing. You're gonna you're gonna incorporate yeah. the home run apple, right? And mm-hmm. then I think you go s- city skyline across the chest. And okay. I yeah. and we talked about this when we did the Mets, that they are not the New York Metropolitans by what everybody wants to call them. They are just the Mets. Yeah, right. But just lean into it. Lean in, turn into the skid, and just go metropolitans across the across the. <laughs> that chair. would be cool. Just that would that. be really cool. Yeah, because I think it would look really cool. And that's the thing is, I love the sound of the name, despite it not totally. being their actual team name. Right, that <laughs> yeah. it would be yeah. really cool to just have metropolitans across the chest, in you know, and have a black jersey, blue across the chest with metropolitans, and a white city skyline with red accents that like outlining the the skyline and stuff mm. like that as mm. for as far as the big apple and i gotta have white pants and black stri- with black socks yeah yeah for sure that's cool i like that I, li- I actually like that i really like the idea of putting metropolitans across the front yeah it's okay. gotta be block letters too block letters yeah it's very uh yeah yeah this, that's getting into the territory i was getting into okay um, so when I think of Queens, right, you obviously think of the bridge, but uh-huh. then you think of the Unisphere. And okay, from Iron Man. I'm, well, this is in Queens. <laughs> I know, just kidding. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> Baseball family, you can't always trust a nerd, okay? <laughs> they know things we don't know. And it makes us uncomfortable. (laughs) But you take this statue, it's the Unisphere, and uh, you put that on the cap. That's your that's your principal logo right there. And I want the swoopies, that orbital iron work going around around the globe. And I need the globe tilted just like it is. Okay. Then Uh because this has such an industrial feel. And it has such a more modern leaning. They built that for the World's Fair, by the way. So, but because they have this more like leaning toward the future thing, it also feels to me uh, like it has this turn of the century industrialism thing going on. And that makes me think somehow of Ayn Rand. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I think what you talked about with the big blocky like iron font uh-huh. goes it sings when you put that that iron mm. and steel uh unisphere sculpture in front of it or or with it so i think you're right i think you put you could put queens you could put flushing you could put the metropolitans you could put whatever you wanted to on the the uniform breast and i want it in that big blocky monolithic sort of intense typeface um that's very i want it to be very very sort of industrial leaning and and sort of i don't know iron age not iron age my words are really hard right now (laughs) you can't get over seeing ayn rand and the trains but i don't i don't know why anyway (laughs) Anyway. It's, it's the cover of the book. That's why. But okay, all right. The end. <laughs> all right. Why don't you t- do you want to do you want to go with the cards? Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I got okay. the color scheme for for the for the Mets. Oh, Here's okay. the queen. Here's the flag of queens. I forgot. I okay. want you to make. Uh, I want the uniforms to the jerseys to be that um, royal blue top, and just like you did with Washington uh, and the textures that was printed on it 
I want this one to be with a velvety almost. See how that mm. looks silky? Yeah. I want it. I want that on there, and then I want that cream colored pant. That's what I want. Cool. There you go. The end. That was the hardest one for me. Nice. Okay. Do you want to do the cards? Or you want me to do the card the cardinals? I want to do the cards first. Okay, go ahead. I'm very excited about this one, okay? Because, Brad, did you know that St. Louis, Missouri is the chess capital of the world? I didn't know that. It is the chess capital of the world. It is also home to the World Chess Hall of Fame. And now I have to go back. I didn't know any of this. I love chess. <laughs> so what I need you to do is place a silhouetted knight on the, the cap oh. itself. That's what okay. I need. For those of you who don't play chess, it's the horse. That's what the knight is. <laughs> and you put that on top of a yellow disc, a yellow circle, which is a nod to the city flag because they have a yellow disc on their city flag representative of the Louisiana Purchase and the Byzantine coin. I looked into all this because I nerded out for a minute, right? So it's a Byzantine coin, and it reflects the Louisiana Purchase, where they got that swath of land. The United States did. So you take the you take the silhouette horse, you put it on top of a yellow disc, you put all that over a red background for the cap, and you you can st stay cardinal red if you want. But again, I'm leaning more toward the darker side. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take the uniform and make it black. But I, I want a subtle red and black checkered pattern, like a checkerboard, but with chess. And instead of black and white, I want it black and red. And you can either make it really small so it looks textured, or you can make it larger and more mosaic, blocky. Doesn't matter which way you lean for me. Um, and I want black pants. And I want all of the accents to be red or to be checker patterns, like chessboard patterns. That's cool. That's what I did not know do. that about St. Louis. I think I think it looks good. Once I learned that, I was like, how do I lean into chess? Leaning Come into on. it all the way. I like it. Very cool. Okay. Mine is pretty simple. Okay. You're drawing inspiration from two things, the St. Louis Browns and the Negro Leagues. Nice. Okay. This is where we're starting. We're going with a simple gray uniform, gray top, gray okay. bottom. It's going to have that kind of wool, that scratchy wool look that the yeah. Nats had for theirs, right? Yeah. You're put that texture on there. You're, then you're going to go with the original St. Louis Browns, uh, their font that they used, and yeah. you're going to go across the front, say, say, just leave it St. Louis, but you're going to incorporate the gateway arch, and it's going to go just across the top. End to end, you're gonna have it there, and then you're gonna have the original St. Louis Browns L S L S S T L insignia on the hat with again yeah. the gateway arch just going over it and a brown hat. Now, Ooh. because the way that you're gonna go into and lean into the Negro Leagues, like you talked about before, with uh, which one was it that you did? Detroit, Detroit, yeah, really thick piping down the buttons yeah. on the chest yeah. and on the sleeve all that stuff is going to be really thick down and then really thick brown down the side i want brown and gray it want, it needs to be monochromatic and boring and it will look absolutely yeah. fantastic i agree with you that yours wins that one wins for sure well thank you that's what i've been looking forward to this entire time <laughs> <laughs> well you nailed it because that's super awesome thanks Okay, tell me about the Rays. What are you going to do in St. Pete? Water. This is what we're going to do with water. We're going to we're going to make <laughs> a, a blue to dark blue gradient from the shoulders Ooh. down to the belt. Okay, okay. it's okay. we're going to embrace Tampa Bay itself, and across the front, it's just going to be like it's going to look like just a line with like little posts on it. And what that is is that's going to be the Gandhi Bridge that runs yeah. across Tampa Bay from Tampa to St. Petersburg. You're bridging the two cities, the one with yeah. the namesake and the one where they actually are. Okay. Yeah. And then your hat, um, you're just, you're going to go, you're going to throw it back to the original Devil Ray because 
I'm sorry. I know you don't love it with the original color, but it's gonna. It looks cool. I like it. So put the original devil ray on there on a navy blue hat with mm -hmm. that same gradient. That so it looks like it's kind of underwater. Yeah. Um, and then white pants. White pants with a navy blue stripe down the side, and then your socks are kind of like they almost look tie dyed because they're gonna have like a water print on them, and it's gonna be like mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna be like a combination of like a dark blue and a light blue. And it's going to look like, like I said, a, a, almost like pool water on the yeah. leg, on the sock there. And that's, that's what you go with on the socks. Pretty simple. Okay. But you're going to lean into water and the original devil raised name. Cool. The bridge. The bridge is just going to get, you just got a Tampa Bay straight across the, the front. Yeah. Or maybe St. Pete. No, let's do St. Pete. I like St. Pete. It's going to say St. Pete yeah, across like the thing. chest with the, mm -hmm. with the bridge going underneath it, almost like an underline. And that's what that is. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I like that. So okay, for me, there St. Pete is known as the Sunshine City, and because they play in St. Pete, I thought the same thing. I was like, let's give St. Petersburg some love. Yeah. So you take you take St. Pete and you put it on there. You don't put St. Petersburg. You right. put St. Pete much. in some kind of funny or some kind of unique and catchy way, and then because they're the Sunshine City. I want I want a sunshine gold uniform, not not tan, but gold, right? And so not beach colored. Uh -huh. So I want a gold uniform that's loud and exciting and bright. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be shimmery, metallic-y, but you know, like really bright gold. And then I want you to put the blue pants for the water. Is what I want. I want blue pants for the water. And then like if that. it's me, you're going to do the blue cap with the visor and you're going to put a pelican on the front because that's the pe the pelican is on the city flag. And you would put the rainbow stripes behind it, like on the city flag, except half your players would choose not to play wearing the rainbow. It's true. Can you take the pelican from the Myrtle Beach Pelicans? Well, it's it's not the same pelican. Okay. It's not the same Just, pelican. Okay. Good question. I had the same thought. That's why I had an answer. <laughs> Very good. I like it. Okay, last one. It, Tell us about it's the like Blue a Jays. side profile pelican. Okay. Tell us about the Blue Jays. Okay, the Blue Jays. You are going to do an inverted Canadian flag. So it's going to be all red because you do lots of blue and lots of white with Toronto already. So we're going to flip it. We're going to go all red, and then we're going to have white sleeves, but I want them in a raglan sleeve. I want them coming down on an angle. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. And then what I want is I want you to call it the Six. It's the nickname of the city. They have a lot of nicknames. One of them is the Six. And then the CN Tower, the Space Needle-looking tower, I want you to put as the I in Six, S-I-X, or you could do the number six IX if you'd like. Okay, whatever you want to do, Nike. I want to see proofs of either because I am decided. And then what I need you to do from there, and that goes across the chest in the middle, bright red, lean into the white uh, with all the lettering. I want everything accented in that Toronto Royal Blue or the powdered blue. I would accept either. Because I think you put all of this on top of either white or powder blue pants. I like it. So with a red cap. So I want to lean. I want to do like all of Canada. Okay. Not just Toronto, because they are the team that represents the country, right? Yeah. They do. yeah. yeah. And so I I want it because there are certain like San Diego tried to be more inclusive with theirs. Yeah. Right. Some sometimes they try to be more inclusive and draw into into neighboring. I want Canada. I want Toronto Blue Jays. I want it to be the Canada Blue Jays when it comes <laughs> yeah, down yeah. to when it comes down to the City Connect. So I want to go with um, just take the Canada WBC uniform and instead really? of having Canada on it, not the one that has the like the like the number like the weird font. Okay, um, good. Just yeah. go red, go red like you do like red. they do with Canada Day, right? Yeah, red. Yeah. 
But then, like what you said, the white stripes. I love the idea. Like, I'm stealing that straight from you because that's a fantastic idea. The raglan <laughs> yeah. with the yeah. white. I love that idea. Yeah. Black font across that okay. says, take off Toronto. Just have it say Canada. That, that's or maybe, awesome. Or maybe the Great White North, eh? Right. I was just thinking you could put north across the front. <laughs> you could put north, yeah. Uh, yeah. You could put north across the front. Um, and then... Just go straight with a maple leaf on the on the hat. Like, right? real like big. you could do the blue jay, but just a big, bold, white maple leaf on a red hat would look really good with like maybe yeah. like a black accent around it, like a black outline or something it would help it pop yeah. a little bit more. But I think just a white maple leaf on a red hat would look really sharp because I think that if they continue to embrace the fact that they're the only team that represents that country, they will continue to draw more fans like – no team like the Yankees travel well, but no team travels to Seattle like the Blue Jays do. Oh, for sure. And it's unreal. It is absolutely yeah, it is saying. crazy. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's probably similar in in Milwaukee, possibly Detroit. Not to that yeah. extent because Vancouver BC is right there, you know, but for those sure. teams, those cities are right there by the border. And I'm sure that they get a lot of Canadians to come over. And yeah. I think that if you had a jersey that said Canada, the Canada Blue Jays on them on it, oh yeah, dude. or just like I said, just Canada, that would sell like hotcakes all the way across the entire country. No pun Probably intended. Right. Uh, <laughs> as long as you serve it with maple syrup, and I can buy it at a Tony Hortons, everything will be all right. Exactly right. Not Tony That's... Hortons. Timmy. Tony Timmy's. Horton is the beach body guy. Tim Timmy Hortons. Horton. <laughs> Tim Hortons. Tony Horton's the beach body guy. Yeah. And with that, it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Let's wrap it up, Brig. Yeah, Let us know what you want to see on these City Connect jerseys, on these City Connect uniforms. Like we said, we showed the Phillies leak like an hour ago. And then yeah. now we're to here. So that's what you get with these. So Sorry. anyway, let us know what you think. But baseball family reach out through the mailbag social media like subscribe rate and review wherever you can subscribe on the youtube machine and we'll catch you next week